Okay, now let's do one last thing before we end this lecture. Uh, let's revisit the Doppler shift, um, but from the perspective of, a for, of the four momentum treatment. Let's imagine that we have two reference frames, S and S prime, where S prime is moving to the right with velocity v, with speed v. Okay. Now let's now let's imagine that um, in S prime we have a light source which emits a photon which is going to be detected at the origin of S. And so what that means is that the photon must travel in this direction. And let's just give it um, a generic name for its um, momentum. Okay, let's call it Q naught. Okay, so in, um, in, in the S frame prime, I mean the S prime frame, <laughs> okay, so in S prime, um, then uh, the four momentum of the photon, okay, is equal to um, Q naught minus Q naught zero zero. So this is the again the temporal term which is equivalent to E over C, and this is the uh, little piece of X. Okay, boy, that you, know, you can't see that, but sorry, the tablet goes a little bit nuts over in that corner. Okay, so that's um, that's the four momentum of the photon in frame S prime. In S, we have to do the Lorentz transformation um, with uh, and and uh, now we want to basically transform from the primed frame to the to the unprimed frame. And so um, the velocity here is minus v. Okay, and so what that means is that um, we want to write down the Lorentz transform equations, but we want to do this in um, in matrix form since we've got a four vector. So let me write those down. Okay, so here I've written them down, and you see here's the Lorentz transform matrix, and you can see now we have a plus sign with the gamma beta terms, and that's just because we're going from the S prime frame, which is moving to the right. So uh, when you go from the S prime frame to the prime frame, it looks like, uh, I mean, the unprime frame, the unprime frame is moving to the left with velocity, with uh, speed v. Okay, so that's why you have a plus instead of a minus sign. Okay, and so um, when you basically carry this out, what you get is for the first term, first uh, component, you get um, this. So you get gamma times Q naught plus gamma beta times minus Q naught. For the second component you get um, gamma beta times Q naught minus gamma times Q naught. And then you get two zeros. Okay, And this has to basically equal to Q, or let's just call it E over C, um, and PX Py, Pz. Okay, that's the. Those are the transform. That's the transformed four vectors. Four vector. And so what we see is that E over C, just from the first equation, is equal to gamma times Q naught times one minus beta, which is equal to Q naught times one minus beta squared. If we bring that inside the uh, square root, uh, and then um, gamma is just 1 over square root of 1 minus beta, 1 plus beta. Okay, so you see that this cancels with one of those, and you're left with Q naught square root of 1 minus beta over 1 plus beta. Okay, so uh, if in later on in quantum mechanics in a few weeks we'll learn that the, the momentum of a photon is equal to E over C is equal to H nu. H is a Planck's constant. Nu is just the uh, frequency of the light of the photon over C. And so if we plug that in to this, what we wrote down here, then we have that the, that the measured frequency is related to the frequency in the rest frame um, like this. Okay, the frequency in the in the source frame, which is exactly what we got, and what we derived in a in a in the other way.